Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. We're on episode four of Bungo Stray Dogs, and last episode, it, it kicked up a notch. <laughs> um, this Akatagawa that has been introduced is quite an interesting antagonist, and I get the impression he's not our main antagonist, because he, he works for the Port Mafia along with Ichio and uh, the woman that he was with who I thought had a ability, but it looked like she just had her machine guns. So I, I, I who knows, um, rewatching it. But it, it seems like he, the, he said they both were dogs for the Port Mafia. So I get the feeling he's not our main baddie. He's just going to be a baddie in this season. And that's fine. He's quite formidable with his demonic looking monster coming out of his back that can eat anything. This, this Rashomon. And I, Tanazaki coming in clutch, Haiji's VA coming in with uh, the light snow ability. When we saw that it was called light snow in episode two, I was like, huh. I'm like, what in the world is light snow going to do? I'm like, is it like an actual snow? But no, it's like a light show. It's like light, like a mirage. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. That is a lot more clever than I would have given it credit for. So that was really neat. I liked that. And then, yeah, so good news. Um, at sushi can turn into a tiger whenever he wants. Good. <laughs> he can also regenerate limbs. Even better. So I was really worried he was gonna like lose a leg and I'm like, really is our main character losing his leg like three episodes into this? But no, he can grow it back. All good. And we finally got confirmation that Dazai, his former occupation was he was a Port Mafia member. How interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that. Would not have guessed that, but that, that brings up a lot of interesting things, like what he was doing, why he left the Port Mafia, what the circumstances were behind everything. So I'm really curious now. Dazai has piqued my interest from the last episode most considerably, as has Akatagawa, whose name I'm slowly getting around. I've been watching the dub the same time, and the dub of this show is pretty good too, and they say Akatagawa. And so they like drop, they clip that U instead of saying Akutagawa, they say Akutagawa. And so uh, sometimes with the dub, I feel like they don't say names correctly. And I'm not sure why, because you'd think the dub staff would go through that process of figuring that out. But sometimes they don't. Um, the free dub bothers me a bit in that regard. Um, but regardless, um, I do appreciate the dub and it's helped me get the names down a little bit better. So the Bungo Stray Dogs English dub, it's pretty good. I like the voice actors for it. So there's that. But I did a little research on um, Tanizaki, Junchiro Tanizaki's ability, Light Snow, and also Rashomon, which is Akutagawa's ability, and the stories that they are based off of. And the Light Snow one's actually pretty interesting. Um, it's based off Junchiro Tanizaki's novel, The Makioka Sisters. And the Makioka Sisters, it's translated to literally Sa... Sasame Yuki, which means light snow. And the novel is, uh, was serialized from 1943 to 1948, and it follows the lives of the wealthy Makioka family from Osaka in the autumn of 1936 to April 1941, and following, focusing on the family's attempts to find a husband for their third sister, Yukiko, who's Yuki, the name Yuki in that means snow. And it depicts the decline of the family's upper middle class suburban lifestyle as the specter of World War II and allied occupation hangs over the family in the novel. So it's a series of books with multiple characters, but the main themes behind it are talking about severity of illness, the decline of characters who long for an idealized past, and attempt to regain connections to their past through rituals and observances. And then there's a lot of different things about political statements. It's a pretty deep, deeply uh, novel with lots of things going on, which is interesting because I didn't expect something that deep and heavy to be with Tanazaki's character. Him and his sister's relationship is really weird. And a lot of people, people in Crunchyroll were like, they're actually siblings. And I'm like, that's interesting. I didn't know we were going Game of Thrones with this and getting some Lannister vibes. Didn't realize we were doing that. But it kind of makes sense. Because um, Tanazaki, this whole novel is talking about longing for past connections. So maybe him and his sister are trying to long for like a past connection with their family. Maybe there's something to that. I don't know. I thought that was interesting. And then what's more interesting to me though is Rashomon. 
So Ryunosuke Akutagawa, um, Rashomon is a short story published in 1915 in this series of short stories called In a Grove. And it is about, it basically follows the theft of a kimono from an individual and discusses the moral ambiguity of thieving to survive. So it talks about a servant and an old woman in the dilapidated Rashomon, the southern gate of the then ruined city of Kyoto, where unclaimed corpses were sometimes dumped. And so that kind of fits the grisly kind of Dracula specter-like appearance of, of Octagawa in the series. But the character that steals has to choose whether to take the path of righteousness and not steal or to steal from this woman to keep from starving. And it talks about starvation and the idea of basically starving to death and being without food. And that made me think of a couple things. One, the fact that Rashomon in Bungo Stray Dogs, this demonic force is like basically, it seems like it's consuming him because he coughs and he doesn't seem like he's in good health. And this monster, meanwhile, is eating everything. And he makes a reference in the episode that he's like, it will devour anything around him, which ties into Rashomon the story about the man that was starving to death and chose to steal in order to survive. But it also ties into Atsushi, because Atsushi in the beginning was starving to death, and he was debating, okay, I'm gonna steal from the first person I see, I'm gonna take their money so I can go get food. And it just so happens that Octagawa is the guy in charge of finding Atsushi to take him back and claim the black market reward for the Port Mafia. So I thought that was really cool that we have these two characters who are connected in this story, who have a thread line together, and the characters in Rashomon are heavily connected to Atsushi's in this series. So I thought that was super interesting. Um, but yeah, I was like, oh, how cool. As soon as I read that, that summary, I was like, that instantly connects to Atsushi. Neat. So I like the idea that it's possible that the things we're going to read about with these characters and their abilities are going to connect to the actual plot lines in the show. I love that. I think that's really cool. So, um, yeah, I've rambled for nearly eight minutes. I, I'm so ready to start uh, episode four, which is uh, the tragedy of the fatalist. Interesting. I guess we're going to get more with the Port Mafia uh, in this episode. But I'm pretty excited, y'all. I hope y'all are too. Please feel free to comment down below. Please, no spoilers. Um, I usually won't do two people in the same episode, but we both got Tanazaki and Atsuga Akutagawa's abilities last episode, so I kind of felt like I needed to. But in any case, we are going to start episode four of Bungo Stray Dogs here in five, four, three, two, one, and let's go. Okay. Okay, cool. Man, so, oh. That was interesting. I, that went by so fast. It went by so fast. Oh. So I definitely want to um, research the old man's technique is the only one we really got. Um, the, the camellia. I want to research what his. At first it looked like it was pushing things away, but then it twists things as well. So I want to know what exactly that reference is. Um, so interesting. So what a, what a, what a bait and switch again. I, this show does a really good job of making you think that something is going to happen and then it just be completely reversed. So I thought, you know, I, at sushi, poor at sushi, our little emotional wear tiger, he is just, he is a, a ball of emotions and he just is so traumatized by the orphanage and what they've, like that indoctrination they've put on him of being like, you're worthless and we hate you and you're no good. And he just takes that such to heart. And I hate it for him because I'm like, dude, you're not. You clearly have an amazing ability and you're gifted. And Dazai has tried to tell you, and clearly you are valuable because the black market wants you and the port mafia wants you. So when he said he was going to leave, I'm like, but that's not going to help. They're still going to attack. And Ichio... She clearly has a thing for Akutagawa, I believe. She's definitely, I, I don't know if it's like a loyalty specifically to him or if, it, if there's anything else behind it, but she definitely is loyal to him and wants to make sure that he's not made to look like a fool. And so 
I'm also like, is your job to sit at that red chair this whole series? Because it's kind of funny. She's just sitting there by that one phone waiting. Like, okay, someone's calling. Here we go. She's like the receptionist, but at least it's a comfy chair. Uh, and then obviously this this guy. I I was a little disappointed that we got introduced to Gein and um, the other man, the red-headed guy. But we haven't seen their abilities at all. But they have clearly distinct character designs. So I'm like, they'll probably come back up in the future. So... I'm looking forward to that. Um, someone on Crunchyroll compared the Black Lizard thing of Port Mafia to, to Team Rocket. <laughs> and at the time when I started the episode, I was like, I don't get that. Why? But then when they're kicked out the window, I'm like, oh, it's kind of like Team Rocket. They're just like, just blasting off again. Like, just get out of here. Uh, we'll be back next time, you meddling kids. Um, oh, that was great. But I love that you, you're led to believe as the audience that the Port Mafia is firing on all of them and they're all in trouble. And then Atsushi gets there and Kunikita's like, where you been? We've been cleaning up this mess. So I really want to know what the one guy, um, Kenji's ability is. Um, he looks like Finn from Black Butler. I want to know his ability. I'm sure we're going to find all this out, so don't spoil me. Um, and then, oh my gosh, the woman whose ability is Thou Shalt Not Die. I'm going to wait a little bit on her ability to research it. Maybe... Maybe the next episode after next. I want to do the, the president right now of the, the Port Mafia group. But, oh my gosh, she looks terrifying. Like, dominatrix. Like, I'm gonna... It reminded me of, like, a demented version of a healing girl from My Hero Academia. Where she, like, heals people by kissing them. I'm like, does this woman, like, heal you by, like, getting physical? I'm like, because that would be interesting. That's it. That Clearly, Tanazaki was not looking forward to it. So, I'm like, hmm... I'm so intrigued. But yeah, Dazai wasn't really in this episode much. He was just kind of there, whatever. Um, but that was kind of okay because this is at Sushi's getting to become more friendly with Kunikita. And Kunikita being flustered. Clearly at the beginning there, Kunikita was worried for him. Because he not only had the glasses off, but he was pretending to read. But it was backwards and he didn't have his glasses on to read. So it's like... Kunikita does care for him, but he's got definitely more of the stern, teacherly, like, just do it, you know? And Atsushi finally realizing at the end of the episode that Kunikita wasn't pushing him away. He was just like, whatever the worst case scenario is, we want you to be part of it. You're still part of us as the agency. We just need to prepare for it, and you're going to help us deal with it. But we're, he wasn't shunning Atsushi away by saying that he was part of the problem. He's like we all are kind of part of this problem together and we're going to get through it together. So don't freak out. And that's who she finally realized that. But this girl in the prison cell is interesting. The one that a Akatagawa clearly is going to probably try to use against our crew. I'm super excited that we get to see, um, Rompo and his ability next episode, the deduction. I'm super excited about that. Uh, that looks like it's going to be fun. His glasses had like a cool matrix -y thing going on. So I'm excited about it. Um, but yeah, but this show, the, the humor of them just throwing them out the window and then being like, we'll just call it a raid. I hate raids. It means we have to spend our office budget. It's like, I, the humor in this show gets me every time and I, I really, really enjoy it. But this episode went by way too fast. It was so fast, but I, I'm glad that this is just kind of like an episode for Atsushi to realize that he does belong in the agency. He doesn't need to keep running away and blaming himself for things, even if Akutagawa is wanting to convince him otherwise. But yeah, um, I definitely want to research the, the man with the monocle, his ability. I want to research that, the Camellia, for next episode. Um, maybe Thou Shalt Not Die, but I feel like I want to wait until we get more with her in the series for that. But... This was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. Um, I'm excited to see some Sherlock's Holmes business going on because this, this whole series has a very British vibe of being set like in London and it's got the Ferris wheel and everything and I keep thinking of Sherlock. So the fact that we might actually have detective-y things going on next episode has me really excited. So yeah, but I hope you all enjoyed this. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll be back next week with more Bungo Stray Dogs. Bye.